Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. We're able to keep things going. Bit by bit, we're making it work. What say thee, Trucy? Okay. So, where exactly does this leave us, Apollo? Well, the Drew Masham who was killed wasn't Drew Masham the Forger, basically. It, well, then who was he? Uh, just some dude? Well, he was actually... Hello? Also, what the hell is that thing? Doing her nails. So, you really made those forgeries? She's more communicative now. I, I can appreciate that. Yes. For father. I know, it was wrong. Could you tell us how it happened? My father was a painter. Yeah, I, I gathered as much. I loved painting ever since I was a child. One day, father saw it in me. He saw that I had the talent. The talent for making forgeries? How should I say it? It was not only paintings I made. Given the materials, I could make anything. Anything? What, like, are we talking like sculptors? <laughs> we got we, we got sculptures and 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 like freaking macaroni art up in here. What? Father was so proud, and died so happy. But in the end, I was making those forgeries. I've never had a good constitution, nor personality. I know very little of the world outside my door. Now, because of me, father is... Do you know about this red envelope? I remember that envelope. It was some time ago. So you were already, um... You were already creating your works back then? Because you would have been very young. Like, that's prodigy levels. I started when I was only 12 years old. So the one who figured out the stamp was poisoned. That was... That's insane. Also, does that imply someone was trying to murder a 12-year-old? That's just... Wow. I mean, murder is always bad, but like... Holy crap. I, I guess the poss... Mm, no, well... Yes, that is what ultimately what would have happened... But, at the same time, I doubt they knew it was Vera specifically that was doing it. <sighs> it's one of those type of situations. Okay. Mr. Justice, it's time. To the courtroom, please. Right. Out of time. Out of time. Wait, Vera, just one more thing, please. Those three paintings in the studio. I painted those as part of my work. Right. See, we checked them out, and we saw what was underneath. Yee <laughs> We saw the rough sketches underneath the three finished paintings. What is up with that? I see. Mr. Justice. Yes? Father. He knew of you. Of both of you. Your late father? He was watching. Gathering information. That's disturbing! All about the Wright & Co. Law Offices. But lately, we're not doing just law. Yes, you do tricks, gags to amuse, and play piano. Well, they're not really gags. They're they're gags. Trucy, you pull things out of a, out of a magic pair of underpants. You're a, you're you're a, you're a gag com. <clears throat> you are a gag magician, unmistakably. Those are a thing, and you are one. There's no shame in that. Yet, when Father heard you had resumed the legal business. How pleased he was. Who was Mr. Masham? Am I supposed to know? What if he was Daddy's Daddy? Uh, that seems exceptionally. Un Phoenix was an artist in college, but no, 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 no. That, 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 that's insane. Judging from the relative ages involved, I'd say it's highly unlikely. How old was Masham? Okay, to 33, to 52. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. 
It's it's insane that the game actually made me squint my eyes for half a second and go, but wait. <laughs> <laughs> like that that sounds insane but it's okay no 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 it, it is insane but what if no okay <clears throat> things are already confusing enough with these daddies running around that's a sentence we know that the victim's daughter vera was the forger what does this mean for the case i guess we're about to find out okay all right Let's see where the road takes us. Courts is now back in session. Vera seems pretty tense. It's almost like she's not built for this kind of thing. She's practically chewing her fingernails clean off. Perhaps you could begin telling us how it all worked. How did you set up this Drew Masham Forger persona? Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. There's that stare again. She's drilling more holes into his head like an old-timey lobotomy. Actually, no, I don't even think it was no, I don't even think it was a lobotomy. I think they just did that for a variety of reasons, and none of them were the ones that they thought that they were. <laughs> Medicine was horrifying in the past, people. Ugh. I know it's hard for you, but hey, he's a handsome guy. What's hard? Very well, miss. If you would. Did you really make those detestable forgeries? <laughs> Perhaps you'd rather answer my question? Were you the one who painted that painting? The remarkably similar one? Ah, uh, yes. I painted it, yes. Father praised me quite highly for it. So, she was the one who made the forgeries. Yet, she did not wish to reveal the truth of their operation. So the victim was a stand-in, a, a decoy. To the world at large, he was the forger, not her. Right, yeah, okay, okay. I've done a bad thing. I have, haven't I? Regardless, we need a little more information. About, for instance, this. You've seen this before, yeah? Yes, it was in the desk drawer. Any information you've got is good information. Very well, you may proceed with your testimony. Tell us everything you know about this envelope. Alright, let's see here. I created things, and Father sold them. This envelope came after my first work. That was other than a painting. Mm -mm. It was weird. They asked for a thinker statue? That was a clock. Not sure I get it. Father handled the deal. All of it. The timeline doesn't work, but I still thought the joke was funny. Whatever. I received the stamp that was in that envelope. It was after that job that we moved to the current studio. Hmm. There certainly was much of great interest in your testimony. Yeah, not that the witness realizes it. Very well. Please begin the cross-examination. Right! Okay! I need more information about this forger. This Drew Masham. All right, this looks like one of those situations where you gotta just press. Like, I don't see any contradictions or, like, things to pull on or anything. This just looks like one of those situations where you need info. Lots of info. So, let's just get everything we can. So these things you are making, uh, you mean paintings identical to other paintings, right? The closer they were, the happier father was. I was happy, too. Yeah, still, you're quite young now. When did you begin this work? My first painting sold when I was 12. Your Honor! She had no idea what she was doing was illegal. Easy there, little attorney. You're not here to defend her for the crime of forgery. True. Mm, true. Please, tell us more about this envelope. As much as I would like to be able to argue a case for you to not have to deal with any jail time at all, I, I was hired for a specific purpose and I have to stick with it. This envelope that may very well have killed your father. All right. Info is good. The envelope came after the first one. That was of the, okay, all right, all right, all right. My stupid joke aside, what was it for then? By other than a painting, you mean you've only done paintings up to that point? That would explain all of the gear in the, the workshop. 
that uh, well was went well beyond the scope of a painter. Yes, but father had a realization. He noticed my talent extended to making things other than paintings. For instance, for instance, a letter someone had written, or a fingerprint left upon a cup. Pa. That of, ooh, or a signature on a document, a seal upon a letter. Ooh, my goodness. None of this makes her sound very innocent at all. And the $100,000 promised in this letter was the start. The beginning of a new industry for Drew Masham. A new industry? The creation of items to be used in criminal proceedings. Forging evidence, in other words. Uh-oh. Okay, okay, okay. So, you didn't know how the things you were making were being used. I enjoy painting very much. I think I understand. The Fraulein has lived in... unusual little world. Yeah, I could... I, I, I could agree with that. Can you tell us what happened to the papers that were in this envelope? Father signed them and sent them back, I believe. Did he follow the instructions? Send in the enclosed envelope with the enclosed stamp? This is a rather important matter. Give your answer some thought. Okay, I received the stamp was in that was in that envelope. What do you mean you received it? She's gonna run out of paper eventually. Did I do something wrong? You didn't use that stamp because it was dangerous, correct? Deadly poison on the back. How would she know that, though? Objection. A moment, Air Forehead. You can't force an answer upon the witness. I mean, prosecution kind of does that a lot, but all right, whatever. Now then, perhaps you would tell me more, Fraulein yeah, Vera. Hmm? Vera, what did you? Why did you receive the stamp? Is something wrong? It was beautiful. Ah, you mean it was one of those commemorative stamps? Yes, I think it was. So, you didn't know about the poison? That would answer a lot of questions. I guess not. So the trap failed by chance, by mistake. So basically... It wasn't because, oh no, this stamp is poisoned, we can't use that, and then we put it in a little commemorative frame and hung on to it for years because, for some for some arbitrarily unknown reason, you just liked the stamp and wanted to keep it, and it just so happened to also be a poisoned stamp. Damn, okay. Thanks to this commemorative stamp. Mm. Quite the close call. That's pretty nutty. It was after that job that we moved to the current <laughs> studio. I'm still not seeing any, like, contradictions or anything. You mean, you moved to where the current Drew Studio is? Yes. We saw very few people there. I began drawing picture books. That's the single job had tied them to the criminal underworld. I didn't think Mr. Basham wished to reduce their visibility in the world at large. That would explain all of the uh, isolation that they've, uh, that he inflicted upon himself. Yeah, that makes sense. When we had to meet someone for some reason, Father posed as the creator of the work. So that was the real essence of the artist Drew Masham. You did the work, and he supplied the face. So, you really didn't know anything, did you? You had no idea how much danger you were in. Okay, apparently not. Okay, but, like, assuming everybody here agrees and believes this then she's in the clear for murder. At worst, it was entirely an accident. About this commemorative stamp, could you tell us more about it? It was very pretty. And more than that, yes? It was a picture of people I liked at the time. This is something new. Daddy style, chugga jigga wugga, daylight soul. Totally necessary, thank you for that. Apparently, we've got some cross-examination yet ahead of us. 
If you'd be so kind as to continue your testimony, Fraulein. Okay, okay, that works, that works, what do you got? The stamp was a picture of my favorite magicians. Magic! So I kept it. Okay, you want to maybe elaborate a little on that? M magicians? I love mysterious things. I always have. Even though she fainted when she saw Mr. Hat. You're confusing mysterious with freaky. Seriously, Trucy, we have to have a long talk about this. Your weird puppet is creepy as all sin, and you need to stop using it. Father took me when I was very young. It was a great magic show. I loved it so much. See? See? Isn't magic great? I never said it wasn't! Fine, great, yeah, sure. When did you get all excited? But the magic troop we saw disbanded soon after. I was quite sad. Did she just say what I think she said? Magic troop? Where have I heard that before? The red envelope came after she'd completed her first job. That makes it a letter from her clients, whoever wanted a forgery made. Apollo! We're close. We just have to piece together the parts. A deadly weapon in a red envelope, and the path it took to take Drew Masham's life. Okay, well... My best guess right here and now is to... Make a connection between troop grammary and this case. That much is obvious. So, it would be them, right? Objection! Those magicians you liked. Was it this bunch? Okay, okay! Apollo! They're not a bunch! They're not some garden variety hair bear bunch, they're a magic troop! Come on, now! I see. Still, I have to wonder. Why include a commemorative stamp like that in a business letter? Good question! Well, pretty stamps are always better, and you can't beat Troop Grammary! But the whole murder plane was a failure because of it. Ironic, don't you think? Prosecutor Gavin? Uh... Hey there, man, you okay? Prosecutor Gavin? Gra... Gra... Grammary? What's with Gavin? Might I ask just one question of this witness? In your testimony just now, you stated this was your first work that was other than a painting. Please, tell me. What exactly did you make? Can I ask what? No. Answer the question. Now! Okay, hey, ho, how about we tone it down? P Prosecutor Gavin, you're usually not the one whose volume concerns me. Yes, it is unbecoming of me. I apologize. But I must know. Please, Miss Masham, tell me. It was a book. A single page in a book. A book? Please be more specific. It was a handwritten book. Like, like a diary. That's new. <laughs> Um... Uh, okay? Uh, there is something here I don't know. What's wrong with Prosecutor Gavin? He looks like he just saw a ghost. Miss Masham, this book. Was there a picture of a silk hat on the back cover? Yes or no? How... How did you know? Prosecutor Gavin, the defendant is answering all of your questions. Stop badgering her. He's told you nothing, has he? Your soiled, sullied mentor. Nothing? Sully? Who? Phoenix Wright. Who else? Daddy? He never told you about the trial seven years ago? About how he came to lose his attorney's badge? No, he's been incredibly cagey about that. It was a certain piece of evidence that decided his fate, you know. A certain diary. On the back, it bore the mark of a silk hat. I see! 
Phoenix Wright, tossed out of the profession by false evidence. And the forger who made that evidence? Is this girl standing right in front of me? Whoa. Vera, you must tell us. The evidence you made was used in a trial seven years ago. Who asked Drew Masham you to forge the ad evidence? For all of our sakes, who was it? We only met once. You... you met the client? Well, who was it? It was... It was... What's going on with Vera? She's staring at Prosecutor Gavin's face... again. Okay, so you see, now all of the pieces are kind of lining up now in my head. Yes, what? Is there something about me? Yes, yes there is, there is Gavin, there very much is. I remember clearly. I remember who gave the book, the diary. Who was it? I, the, Vera? The, d devil? Um, I'm deeply concerned. You don't usually choke before you pass out. Defendant Vera Masham, condition unconscious. Examiner's diagnosis, poison? Who poisoned? How? What? When? When? What? This ends the recording of the trial for the murder of Drew Masham. Vera Masham was, during the trial, poisoned by an unknown assailant. The dosage was just under the lethal amount, sparing the defendant's life. She is currently in intensive care and is not to be disturbed for any reason. A very simple case at a first glance. Until it finally began to show its true colors. Whoa! Music, hello! The long road to the truth takes us to the record of another trial. In some ways, that was the starting point of it all. And that is where we must go. To find the whole truth. I... see. Okay! Uh, uh, well, uh... Uh, good news for you guys. I'm not about to put up a 22-minute video, so we're just gonna keep going, I guess. Wow. Okay. So, does th this means what I think it means, right? So, yeah. It says seven years ago. We're, we're traveling to the past, people. Oh, that's concerning. Showdown time. I... I lost. It's only a game of poker. A game I've played for a long time. And only lost twice. Who was the first? The man I killed, of course. Well. It seems I found the partner I've been looking for all along. Over a game of cards? Why, yes, over a game of cards. That was how we first met. Seven years ago. This is going to cause intense emotional distress to me, isn't it? Okay, okay, okay. I don't like knowing this ending. The music! Oh. It makes me happy and sad. Okay, it's been a long time since I felt like such a rookie. 
Gotta try and relax. Hmm. Ah, good morning, Mr. Enigmar. I'm sorry to have sprung this on you so suddenly. I received the files from your previous attorney only yesterday. Honestly, I'm not entirely sure I'm prepared. What do we have? Okay, we got attorney's badge, a crime scene photo. Shot in the head. Gah. Wow, that is weird. Ugh. Okay, all right. Uh, looking at this, looking this over, it's a man in a hospital bed. Yeah, definitely he shot in the head. I see what is definitely a, a missing journal piece, a, like a bag, a very fancy gun, and also somebody shot a clown? Okay, and Magnifi. Huh. 67, estimated time of death between 11 and 11.30. Loss of blood from bullet wound? Note, malignant tumor found in victim's liver. Huh. Also, I don't know if a shot in the, to the forehead would really legally constitute as death of loss of blood. I think that would, wouldn't that result in, I don't know, like brain failure? I'm not, I'm not a doctor. I, I don't know. I don't know. That just, that sounds odd to me to phrase it that way. I understand I'm asking the impossible of you. Yes, well, you haven't really told me what happened yet. All we did was play cards. Okay, so seeing as how they played cards and everything and all that, blah, 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 blah. this is Shady Smith. You know, the victim of the first case. I held back on saying that when I saw it last time. Among a second thing, by the way, there's another thing about that picture that made me very concerned. And that was enough. Actually, it wasn't. Trust me. And then there's this tiny babby. Oh, morning, Daddy. Ah. I'm so glad you came. You okay, Daddy? They picking on you? <laughs> I'm fine as always. This old boy here is to help me after all. That's young man to you. Yeah, it most certainly is. Seven years younger. Wait, even younger than that? Yeah, because Phoenix is Phoenix is 33 in seven years. He's very yeah. Good morning. That's a cute outfit you have on. Thanks. My first show's today, after all. Oh, I'm sure it is. What the heck is she talking about? Oh, old boy. Uh, me? Oh, look what he started. Um, uh, here. Uh-oh. It seems Faith's clock will make me wait a little longer. At least only less than ten swift minutes remain. To all those who have supported me in my life's work, I give thanks. Farewell. Magnifi Grammary. What's this? I don't know. I just got it over there in the hall. They told me to give it to the old boy in the blue suit with the spiky hair. They said it was really important. What's this? A memo for you or some such? Uh, not from the looks of it. What is this? Looks like a page from someone's diary. I'll give it a read later. Joke's on you. I already read it. However, uh, mm, me thinks this is bad times. <laughs> bad times for us. How do you feel about the trial today? He'll get through it, somehow. Incidentally, the prosecutor today is a new guy, I hear. Ah, an easy win then, yes? They're calling him a true thoroughbred in the history of the prosecutor's office. Of course, there's one of those every year. I'm glad he said it! Sounds like every single game a new person showed up as the new greatest prosecutor to ever live. Switching of attorneys just before the trial. I know it is a difficult situation I put you in, but... Allow me to say one thing, Mr. Wright. Yes? They will not be able to pronounce me guilty today. So do your best, but do not worry. First time a defendant's ever given me such a pep speech. I'll do what I can. Ha! Ha 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 ha! I see you do not understand. That also seems like it might be typical for you. No worries! You see, it will be impossible for them to declare a verdict. Uh, impossible? Yes! Isn't that right, Trucy? Yep, you bet, Daddy. My first look at the case was only yesterday, and the information I was given was a tad bit lacking, to be honest. Still, I'll do what I can, for their sake. And I believe the curtains will be lifting any time now. I am in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. My client is Shady Enigmar. Okay, okay. The game isn't hiding it. 
I, uh, at the same, uh, I don't know. Part of me was like, maybe they were counting on me not remembering, you know, Shady Smith's face. But then... Okay, no, a lot of things, okay, not everything, but a lot of things about the first case are starting to make a lot more sense now. Because, you, you know, he had the locket with Trucy in it. And we were wondering, why did this random dude you played poker with have that? That would be what? It, he was, he was, he was Trucy's real dad. But then, what on earth, what were they talking about? Why did they play... There are still so many questions. Known to the world as Zack Grammary, a wildly popular magician, star of Troop Grammary. His mentor, Magnifi Grammary, was a rare breed of magician. He single-handedly ushered in a golden age of stage magic until he was shot dead. And Zack Grammary is the suspect. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Court is now in session for the trial of Shady Enigmar. The defense is ready, Your Honor. God, this feels surreal to look at. Is the prosecution ready? I was just thinking. Is this what all the fuss is about? Bit of a buzz kill, really. Buzz kill? Is this some new kind of crime? Oh, judge. One of the worst. This is a trial, ya. Yeah? Where are the sweaty palms? The pounding hearts? Gavener's concert got 10 minutes the thrill this gig's got. You implied that you had started your band recently when you talked about it in the last trial. Who were you again? Clavier. Clavier Gavin. I came to get the party started. Legally, yeah? Gavin. Defense attorney Christoph Gavins? Ah! Figures my bro's more famous in this part of my town. Clavier Gavin. Lead singer for the mega-hit band, The Gaviters. Wow. Phoenix is more informed about him than Apollo was. You're out of your league, rock boy. Ooh, pride cometh before the fall. Oh, I don't like... Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're out of your league, rock boy. Okay, fair enough. True, my debut single, 13 Years Hard Time for Love, went platinum overnight. But that's just a hobby to me compared to this, yeah? Talkative, aren't you? I like your affected Euro rock accent, by the way. <laughs> I'm just getting warmed up, Air Attorney writes. Well, the nickname isn't derogatory, at least. Perhaps you would be so kind as to fill us in on the case. Octong, baby. Time to call on the opening act. What was his name again? Ah, uh, yes. Detective Gumshoe! Hit it! We get to see Gumshoe? Gumshoe! And you are? Hey, you were the one who called me up here, sir. Name's Dick Gumshoe. I'm a homicide detective down at the precinct. Detective Gumshoe. Long time no see. That's saying a, a, a lot, yeah. Hey, you! Huh? Me? Today's the day, pal. Today I win and you lose. I got confidence in my testimony today, see? What? You normally lack confidence in your testimony? Air Detective, this is my stage. Can the antics. Uh, all this hey you -ing and such. And I could care less about your history together. Yeah, well, I care! Maybe leave him alone. I think this might be the last time I get to see the guy. Very well, Detective Gumshoe, if you would. Please tell us about the case at hand. It happened six days back in a room at the General Hospital. Ugh. I do not like that photo. The facts are as simple as they come. Here's the crime scene. The victim was a patient asleep in a hospital bed. The killer comes in, puts a pistol to his forehead, and BAM! Lights out. Them's the facts. Hmm. Not so long ago, the victim, Magnifi Grammary, was a famous man. He had the entire country under his magic spell, as it were. Ah, yes, the great magician. He retired years ago, though. Say the name Magnifi to one of my generation, and you'd be lucky to get a blank stare. Ugh, I hate how true that is to life. Yes. Though I'm sure the youngsters today know his disciples even better. I dare say Troop Grammary has made quite a name for themselves. 
Anyhow, the retired Magnifi's been in the hospital for the last year. Uh, what was it? Uh, mal-ignorant Tudor or something? Doing something to his liver, I think. Yeah. A malignant tumor, perhaps. In other words, he had liver cancer. He had only three months left to live, in fact. I see. The facts do seem simple enough. Something's not right. The victim was already climbing a three-month stairway to heaven. Why not wait for him to knock, knock, knock on heaven's door? What's with all the music references suddenly? <laughs> Why shoot him? You wouldn't have put it quite so lyrically, but yeah. Is it just me? It, it feels like the Phoenix and Gumshoe sprites aren't the same ones that were used in Trials and Tribulation. Like, the HD port, like, I feel like they're different. I'd have to put them next to each other to really be able to tell, though, but I don't know, there's something a little different about them. Why make the effort to commit murder when the victim was about to die? Incidentally, the victim had a serious case of diabetes. Diabetes? In fact, he was about to shoot up with insulin. Wow, that's a reference. When he was shot with a pistol, the syringe was found at the crime scene. Chronic diabetes and cancer. As much as it pains me to say it, the victim was clearly at the end of his life. That is undeniable. I believe the question before us is clear. Why did the killer have to shoot this dying man? What reason could he have had? Very well, detective. Perhaps you can enlighten us as to the circumstances of the shooting. Y yes sir. Okay, I'm listening. Actually, the victim kinda ordered the defendant to do him in. Okay. A few days before it happened, the victim sent a letter ordering his own murder. The defendant did what was asked of him and shot the old man in the forehead. And also in a clown doll, apparently. The bullet was fired from the pistol found at the scene, no doubt about it. And the pistol definitely belonged to the old man, sir. Okay, there are a few things I want to point out at that. W what? Y you're saying the victim ordered his own shooting? Those are the facts. I have here the letter in question. To my beloved student, Zach, to you I entrust the task of lowering my life's curtain. I wanted to read that! Why would you do that? Let me read that! Jackass! Lowering my life's curtain. Come on the 13th, 11.05 p.m. That is incredibly specific. I will ready a gun with which you will shoot. One shot, square on the forehead. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why? Okay... Although, could such a thing as a letter really cause one to pull a trigger, I wonder? I believe the answer to that question can be found at the end of the letter. Hmm. You cannot refuse, and we both know the reason why. Detective Gumshoe, can you explain this to the court? Unfortunately, even the defendant won't say a peep about that bit, sir. One thing bothers me about this. Why didn't he just say 11? Yeah, okay, thanks Phoenix, glad we both picked up on that. Why have him come at 11.05 without some specific reason? The devil is in the details there, attorney. Well, what was the reason? As it turns out, there was every night for half hour starting at 11. The victim, Magnifi Grammary, was given an IV. An IV? Yeah, I see it. There it is in the picture off to the side of the bed. At 11, a doctor would come to set up the IV. 30 minutes later, he would come back for the empty bag. This happened every night without fail. So that was the only time they could meet without the chance of an untimely interruption. During his IV. Okay. Very well, shall we begin? Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you would. What's this reason he couldn't refuse, I wonder? He could have at least mentioned it to me, that would have been nice. Okay, so I've got a few things I want to know about. Honestly, kind of all of it. Okay, yeah, you know what? Let's just let's just listen to Plus I miss you, Gumshoe! Let me hear them voice. Just because he got the letter doesn't mean he went through with it. Oh, I disagree. The victim was indeed shot in the forehead after all, just as he had commanded. It could be a setup. 
but let's not be in such a hurry. Maybe we should let the witness talk for a change. Thanks, pal. Fine, I can play it slow as well as I can play it fast. Hmm. On with the testimony, Detective Gumshoe. Okay, a few days before it happened, the victim sent the letter ordering his own murder. Okay, come on now. And this letter was sent by the victim? There it is! Gotcha! You're all mine this time, pal! Huh? I had the handwriting checked out! Of course! It's the victim's, no mistake! Ah, huh, I see. Ha ha ha! Score one for the boys! I didn't lose, I was just ascertaining the facts. So why am I so annoyed? But, a letter ordering your own death? Things aren't what they used to be, I guess. I'm not sure this is exactly commonplace even now, Your Honor. So, anyway, guess I'll keep going while I'm ahead. Oh, Gumshoe, you special soul. His eyes look especially shiny today. Weird. Anyway, let's keep talking. Also, Phoenix's voice clip is different. Yeah, definitely different from how it was in uh, the, the previous games. How can you be so sure? Hey, you gotta learn to stop relying on people to do your thinking for you, pal. Learn to think for yourself. Get that noggin cranking. You failed to grasp the concept of questioning, detective. First, we got this letter. It says, shoot in the forehead. Loud and clear. I can see that, but I still wouldn't do it. Well, maybe you need to grow yourself a backbone, pal. You failed to grasp the concept of shooting people as bad, detective. God damn, man. We also found the defendant's pistol at the scene. Traces of gunpowder residue show that it had been fired recently. Why leave it there? Well, Mr. Wright, as far as I can tell from looking at this photo, there seems to be no issue with the prosecution's claim. Hmm. The photo... Maybe there's something in there I can use? So they're saying the defendant shot the victim in the forehead. And I think there's a hole in the prosecution's argument. Clearly, Mr. Enigmar, I mean... Yeah. I saw two shots. Looking at this photo, another possibility occurs to me. Yes? What does the letter tell us? That the defendant had a reason he couldn't refuse his teacher's wishes. Bingo, pal! That's why the defendant popped him in one, uh, one in the forehead. Mm -mm -mm. Oh. The defense disagrees. You see, the defendant had another choice he could make. Objection! What? And you can prove that with this photo? Hmm, I can, yes. I can prove he had a choice, yes. The defendant might have fired like he was ordered, but he didn't shoot the victim's forehead. Well, let's hear what you're thinking, Mr. Wright. If you didn't shoot the victim's forehead, what did the defendant shoot? That weird-looking honking clown over there. What the heck is that all about? That's what I want to know. Man, these voice lines are going to take some getting used to. The clown doll? Take a closer look. See? It's been shot in the forehead, too. Ah. There's a hole in its forehead. There sure is. Yes, and a hole in the prosecution's claim. Objection! <laughs> and I suppose you have a reason as to why he'd shoot the clown doll? He didn't just shoot the doll. He shot the doll's forehead. His forehead? Ah! Let's read the orders once more, shall we? You will shoot, one shot, square in the forehead. Which is exactly what he did. He shot the doll square in the forehead. The defense has raised an intriguing possibility. That hole in the clown's forehead, it definitely looks like it was shot. Bailiff, send someone to investigate this matter. Objection! I admit, I'm impressed. But I expected nothing less. Still, this doesn't mean he didn't shoot the victim. Objection! Perhaps he did have to shoot a forehead as ordered, but the letter says nothing about whose forehead. This was the only way he had to follow his orders without taking a life. Hmm. A bullet hole in the clown's doll's forehead does demand an explanation. It might very well be a clue. Yet, Prosecutor Gavin is right. It alone does not prove the defendant's innocence. You cannot say for sure the defendant didn't shoot the victim. So sorry, Mr. Wright. How sad it is to see the mighty fall. How sad it is to see the novice's overconfidence. He doesn't realize just how big this little hole is going to get. Detective Gumshoe, please take this newfound fact into account as you continue your testimony. 
So what if he shot the clown? He still shot the victim, pal. Um... I mean, I don't have anything to contradict that, so... Yeah, and there's still two P. I want. I wanted to press everything, so let's give that a go. You mean this pistol, the one in the crime scene photo? That's the one! It's a funny-looking gun, so there's no mistake in it. We compared the bullet taken from the victim's skull with a bullet fired from this gun. The rifling marks on the bullet were a perfect match. So, you verified the murder weapon, in other words. You bet we did! He's so proud. So proud. Why are you so certain? What pile of sand has your head been stuck in all this time, pal? You never heard of Zack and Valen's quick draw shoot him? Eh, what's that? One of the defendant's specialties. Mmm, that photo though! I won't say it. Zack and Valen stand on either side of a girl. Then they shoot. But the bullets don't hit her. Instead, they hit everything else on stage. This was one of the pistols they used in their show. Got a great design, huh? Kids love it. Many boys and girls joined the police because of that pistol I hear. You know, that would explain a lot about the police force. <laughs> Troop Grammary stopped doing that act a while ago. The old man held onto that pistol ever since. The court would like to see the pistol in question. You got it, sir. Here she is. Well, this truly is a blast from the past. It's a stage pistol for magic shows, see? But it can fire real bullets. Hmm. It looks so much bigger in real life than on TV. Yeah, but it can only hold one round. There we go. By the way, the pistol's firing chamber is empty. And it shows traces of having been fired recently. So, were any fingerprints found on the gun? Unfortunately, no. Of course, the defendant is known for wearing gloves. We might say that a lack of fingerprints is, in fact, a fingerprint of its own. Mm-hmm. Intriguing point. Well made. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not well made. Not intriguing. <laughs> Not the mama. No, 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 no. In any case, the court accepts this evidence. That's very good evidence indeed. Thank you. My grandchild would get a kick out of seeing this. But now it's time to return to our testimony. Okay, yeah, no. I can definitely work with this. Ba -ba -ba -bum 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 -bum. Objection! Alright, how about we do a little bit of explaining here? The trickiest cases often seem the simplest. Prosecutor, er, Prosecutor Gavin, you missed the bullet hole in the clown's forehead. That much is obvious! If you hadn't missed that, you might have come to a very different conclusion. Understand? Y yeah, but like I said, pal, after he shot the clown in the forehead, he went and... Objection! No, no he didn't. Now shut up, I'm talking. Did nothing of the sort to the victim. The pistol proves he could not. The murder weapon? How? It's quite simple, Your Honor. This pistol only holds one bullet at a time. Huh. If he had shot the clown in the forehead, he couldn't have shot the victim, too. Oh, the music. Okay, sorry. I want to bask in the song for as long as possible, but I can't just sit here grooving. Yarg! Objection! Th that's not a contradiction! Not even close! All he had to do was reload the pistol after the first shot! Objection! Oh? But where did he get the extra bullet? They're not easy to come by, you know. If you claim the defendant had one ready, then prove to us how he got it. Damn, Phoenix is in charge, and it is crazy to watch. Oh, all right. I had a feeling this wasn't over yet. No, this party's just getting started. And I haven't proven anything yet beyond my good looks and startling record sales. Man, you act... You know, I called you a tool before, but you were a full-blown toolbox when you were younger. And utter lack of humility. Now, what's this? It seems that the prosecution has another witness prepared. Like I said, Air Detective was just the warm-up act. Now that the audience has gotten a taste of what's to come, they're ready. Ready for what? Ready to rumble, primarily. For my decisive witness, of course. A witness who, you will find, can prove one thing for us. That it was Zack Grammary who shot the victim in the forehead. 
Very well. We will pause for a 15-minute recess. This might be my lucky break. I'll need that 15 minutes to talk to my client, Zack. Court is adjourned! What? Already? Man, these are short.